welcome back to the LUFC kickoff, your favourite Leeds United show, and that is a verifiable fact. Before we do start this video, if you think this is some sort of Arabic writing, it actually says Dirty Leeds if you can read. It's ironic me telling you, can you read when I'm the college dropout. So today is an interesting one because obviously we beat Brentford 1-0 at home. I even went to the game myself, it was amazing, it was interesting, all sorts of happened. So before we do go ahead and talk about the game and review and talk about the players and the stats, let's roll the vlog. So that was just a bit of footage that I filmed there. I didn't really have time to film a full vlog of me travelling there and talking at the game. But just a bit of footage for you people to enjoy. Diving straight into this, I feel like we did take quite a bit of time to actually get used to things. You know, I did have that Pez view as well, so I could see the whole pitch. I literally had the FIFA sort of view. I feel like the second half, we definitely did play better. Hernandez, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit disappointed. He didn't, he normally does play very good every game and he is a top, top quality player. There's no denying that. But in this game, we didn't really see much of him. He didn't really put in as much of a shift as he normally does. Gotta say though, Inketia. I just wanna go, I just wanna die, I just wanna say it. Sorry, right. Inketia, he is a god. He's the best player in the world. I'll say this now, clip this. Inketia, he's better than Messi, Ronaldo, Bale, anyone. The reason why I say that is because he scored. Another goal, two in two. He scored two goals in two games he's played. Obviously, the first game, it's debatable whether you want to count that because it was the cup game, obviously, against Salford. But at the end of the day, if Bielsa, he needs to be seeing this. If Bielsa is seeing that every time he plays, he's scoring goals. He's that clinical striker. He's a poacher. That's what he is. He's from Arsenal. He's got that ability. He looks like one of those typical clinical Arsenal players. And this is the thing. That, this is the player that we needed to finish our opportunities. I've always said we need to take our chances last season because even this season we're creating loads of chances, but we need to score loads. As soon as we brought him on, on 70th minute, wherever it was, near the end of the, near the end of the second half, he played. He put in a shift. And I said this. For, regardless of the goal, the goal was good. It was in the right position at the right time. He had pace. He's fast. Regardless of the goal, he played amazing. As soon as he scored, I was like, okay, already he's done himself well, well played, maybe even man of the match because he scored. 
but he was phenomenal. He was running up and down the pitch. I remember he even tackled Janssen at once, like, yeah, fuck off. Honestly, yeah, he was just amazing. He was chasing the ball down. I remember he literally, at near the end of the game, a few minutes, he ran across the whole pitch and he was up front to, like, midfield or whatever, or defence, just to tackle somebody. Uh, he was passing back when he needed to, like, he wasn't too, like, cautious. He knows who was around him, he uses his space. He's very, very fast. And I can I just say, Costa and Ketia work very well. The play, Costa, I want to say, he, he basically called, he created that goal. I mean, obviously, because he assisted it, but that assist was amazing. Costa is fast as fuck. He is rapid. And these are the players that we need in our team. Because we've got these people like Hernandez, like Harrison, like Douglas, like Phillips, that can pass around, that can move about, Alioski when he needs to. But we need people that can finish, and Nketiah is definitely one of them, and Costa hopefully is one of them this season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, first up, I wouldn't say it's like, our best game, I wouldn't say like, we battered them. Obviously, we did have a lot of possession, they only had like 30% possession or something, so it's always good to have these possession. But I do feel like it wasn't our best game, you know, it's like it's a 1 0. I would have liked to go, like I always say in these episodes, I would have loved to have had a goal in the first half. Unfortunately, we didn't. We had to wait to the second half <laughs> quite late in the game too as well. But yeah, because it is nerve-wracking. You know, Leeds, it's just it's just Leeds. Like, you don't know what's going to happen with us. And the same as anything in Championship. That's why I love EFL Championship. It is one of the greatest leagues in the world. It's unpredictable, but I'm just so glad that we came out on top with that W. On top now, joint points. But the, I think we won at, at this point currently standing. I think it's one goal difference we are ahead. We need to maintain this and keep going. Motivation. This is gonna. It's gonna be momentum for us even to keep going, winning more games. I gotta say though, the rest of the team, we played well. You know, White played well. Everyone played well. But I would say though that, and also Forshaw played very well. Can I just say that? I, for, I forgot about Forshaw. Forshaw's one of these players where. At the start when we got him, he was just an alright player, but he's building, and you can tell each game he's getting better and better. He's looking out for them passes, he's good at moving about. And he, he's very good, for sure, at breaking up the play. One thing that is, does annoy me still, is that sometimes when we are near that box, that six yard box, or just in the box, we don't shoot, we're sort of just turning and passing it. And I understand Bielsa's, it's Bielsa's thing at the end of the day, it's his tactic, we need to pass around, and we, have, we are having that possession, so that is all wonderful, it's all great and well and good. But we need to be putting our chances away. We easily could have scored about five or six goals in that game. Thank you guys for watching. That's been the review of the game. Moving on to bigger games. We've got Stoke next away. It's going to be very hard. But you know what? We're going to come out on top. That's just going to be good. Keep believing. Got to keep betting. I'm not promoting betting, by the way, because I did bet on the weekend. I did lose some money. But no, I'm real though. We're getting better and better. Obviously, it's going to take time for Bielsa to start in Ketio. He's not going to start him straight away. He needs more games to get him comfortable in that team and replace Bamford, hopefully. But also, Bamford, maybe this is competition for him. Maybe he's going to step up his game. So it's going to be very interesting. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, if you're a football fan, a football fanatic, or just a Leeds fan in general, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Turn on our post notification bell so I, you get notified when I upload every single day. I upload these episodes every single time Leeds play on the same day or the day after. I love you people. Be yourself. Be weird. Be different. I'll see you guys in a bit. Now your vids hold no weight. Like Titanic channel sinking to the ground. Talking your piece on the web. Karma always come around. Eating up these W's. Can't you see I have the crown? Feasting on you enemies dead and buried in the ground digging your own hole in the soil of what i found your shit inconsistent i don't really fuck around put some respect on my name you playing with the hounds i've been waiting i've been saving all these bullets all these rounds and i wonder why this hate or this hate don't come around i'm the king to the front of this shit wearing the crown flooding all you haters you ain't shit now you left to drown